So this is our autumn house. It's a real favourite for me and my team, one that we've poured a lot of love into. It's located on Wurundjeri country and we'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri as the traditional owners of this land. In Carlton North, with a laneway on two sides, it's a single fronted Victorian, but a double block that was architect Mick Jorgensen's own home. Our clients bought the house after Mick died and asked us to help them turn it into their family home. Mick had extensively renovated the Victorian in the 80s. He closed off the front and added a new entry to the side of the house through here. You can also see the large elm tree that Mick planted and loved dearly. Here's the side laneway and the elm tree hanging out over the lane. It's built up on all other sides. Mick had added a series of living spaces, a studio and various outbuildings that all worked their way around the tree. And this is the existing lounge space and hallway. And while the spaces were all beautiful in their outlook, it was all south facing with very little light and was essentially a one bedroom house. So it needed some work to house our clients and their twin girls. This is the existing condition with the studio and shed spaces at the rear. These were removed and we wanted to work around the tree. This is the existing house. Oh, sorry, I've just dumped around my thing with the, um, we saw that as a nighttime sleep, sleeping zones and have added another thing on the side. Just jumped my whole thing here, sorry. Ah! With North Face, if we propose the new living spaces on the side with North Face that could face North. And we thought of the ground floor as a series of walled gardens that could provide some privacy from the lane. We proposed an upper level adjusted for the main bedroom and a roof terrace space with the wedge holding the two elements in a cohesive form. And here's the roof terrace with the main bedroom getting offset. We imagined the wedge as a garden structure that could also give something back to the lane. The site plan here with the thickened edge and the ground floor plan with the kids' bedrooms in the existing Victorian and that lounge and then a new north facing kitchen and living spaces with an entry off the lane, you can see it here, and a study and activity space at the front of the site. Here's the section. The wedge shape is largely defined around overlooking constraints, height clearances and balustrade requirements and the desire to have a lush upper garden. And the elevation, while very tall at the rear, we liked that the design was recessive to the front of the site and the Victorian streetscape. You can see here that the elm is always on show. And in autumn, the wedge is revealed and like the tree will one day be covered in a hedge of creepers that will change color with the seasons. We've loved seeing the growth in recent times. And here's the rear laneway. The autumn tones of the mesh also picking up on the red brick of the rear lane. But instead of heavy masonry, the form sits as a delicate veil. And from the other side with the jasmine and rosemary giving their scent to the lane. Here's that laneway entry door. Coming inside, you can see the courtyard gardens that provide welcome relief from the gritty lane the porous skin connecting views all the way through. And here you can see the study and bike room across from the kitchen. And while the kitchen is not large, it supports the family well. The concrete bench that took many tests to get right. And through to the lounge, you can see the connection to the north facing courtyard and the built-in lounge that wraps the curved perimeter wall. And back across, you can see the new volume hangs above the existing house with glazing all around. North light could penetrate deep into the space. Tucked in behind the timber panelling is a small powder room. And coming out to the north courtyard now, you can see that rosemary and jasmine spilling down with just the right amount of eve to keep out the summer sun. So coming up the stairs now, you can see the roof terrace. And here's the upper level floor plan with the main bed and ensuite all sitting within the garden wedge. And the upper bedroom with greenery and mesh all around. The ensuite. And there's the rooftop up in the elm tree with the birds. 
And back downstairs now, you can see the view back into the existing house with the high level glazing above and the Jorgensen lounge largely intact, but with circulation restored to the original Victorian side. And here's the hallway. I suppose we've taken you through the house in reverse. It's hard to see the work and care that has gone into the existing house. This project has really been two res restoration projects and an addition, every architrave, skirt and junction considered. Thinking about a bathroom for twin girls is a lovely thing, always with a connection back to the elm. The study, separate but connected spaces working so well. And out to the front again, where a productive garden has been a happy place in the neighbourhood. Maya, the project architect, is with me here today. Um, Maya's cared for every bit of this project, house numbers, window screens, meter boxes, all custom designed. And a new measure in our studio of a good client is would you make a shower curtain for them? The answer here is yes. And so I'll pass you briefly to Maya to talk through some of the details. All phases of the project were negotiating the tree from design and through construction. The tree needed protection, but sometimes so did the slab, the autumn leaves falling just at the wrong time. But we didn't mind when a few leaves got through. This project was a collection of all geometries, angles, curves, and pointy ends. These junctions were painstakingly detailed. Here are a few drawings showing the care poured into every part of the building. Of particular importance were the facade and planter junctions and the curved stair and mesh roof. Here's the mesh perimeter frame being installed, ready for the mesh veil. And the planter inserts, all carefully documented with geometries and drainage. One minute remaining. Next came the mesh over the framework, which required much discussion to get right. And here we are trying to sort out the pointy end. Thanks, Mel. The big test is will the video work? We have loved seeing this family settle into this house over the last year. We designed it pre-COVID, but have been delighted to see it working well. Our homes have needed to work even harder in recent years, becoming workplaces and classrooms on top of everything else. Seeing them as supportive, nurturing places has certainly become more important than ever. And in such a gritty laneway environment, it's nice to see the contrast on the inside. We think that even in tight urban areas, there's opportunity for lots of green. This benefit going beyond just this family, but also an offering of urban generosity to the neighbourhood and lane. Thank you.